The year 1989. Al Gore was inventing the internet. Danielle was born. The Game Boy came out. The Berlin Wall apparently fell. And Chevrolet was working on their B-body Caprices. They figured it out. This is like the last couple of years of this thing. Fuel injection. And they nailed it. So we just picked up 89 Caprice. Bro Broham. Brom. Uh, we had to drive a ways. We're uh, seven or eight hours away from home. Way up north, we have no support. There's no parts stores, there's no nothing. But we have a 35,000 original mile bought off the original owner, Caprice, Caprice. I don't really know what we're gonna do with it, but a guy at work's uh, old man wanted to get rid of it, and I thought to myself, you know, I had an extra 2,500 bucks sitting around. We might as well buy this thing, so maybe we'll do a quick tour of it. So it is, it's got a couple of whiskey wrinkles in it. You know, the old guys, eh? they, they like to test out the structural rigidity. So we got to pop a dent out here, a little headlight there, or a little side marker. The paint just started to come off the hood. So it might need a quick, quick splash job up top. No big deal, the vinyl top. It's actually not in too bad a shape. A little armor all on there maybe. Should be good as rain. And the deck lid, something had a little, a little slip and fall on it, unfortunately. So we'll have to figure that out. But underneath, my God, is this thing clean. So we're up north. There's no salt on the roads. Like I said, 35,000 original miles. The thing sat in a garage its whole life. Only went on a couple of road trips out to all the Great Plains of Saskatchewan, apparently. Look at the trunk of this thing. Brand spanking new. The rear frame rails are mint. The floorboards are mint. I don't know how this works. Oh, there we go. Everything underneath is just pristine. We've driven it about three miles. The problem is it randomly stalls. It doesn't like to idle for some reason. We brought a bunch of tools. We actually brought the truck with the, the tow dolly just in case it goes sideways. Like I said, for the last couple hours of the trip, you don't even have any uh, cell phone reception. We got ourselves a little 305. I believe it's a 700R, it's overdrive transmission. Early throttle body injection, cruise control, air, inside. Look at this thing. Air tilt cruise, power everything, power seat. Danielle's falling in love with this hot rod. I really am, I quite like it. Cassette. I'm excited to go to get some cassettes for sure. So I don't quite know what we're gonna do with this thing. It might be a USA vehicle. It might be a Danny drives to work every day vehicle, but uh, I'm excited about it. I had dreams of, oh, what is this? I overpaid. Um, maybe an LS swap, I was thinking. We'll see, a little 305. But if we got the air conditioning working, or I mean, just make it run proper, which we easily may just do. I got a bill for 600 bucks, just had a tune up in it with uh, plugs, rotor, cap, alternator, they did a water pump, flush the coolant. I mean, everything is just perfect on it. So well, I guess we might as well check the oil and stuff. We'll get a couple of paper towels out of the truck and just make sure this thing's quite as minty as I was sold and we'll hit the road home. Nice to be home before dark. It's been a long day. We left at 5 a.m. Long day. So now the real reason I bought this, this is kind of the next version of, I guess a barn find. You know, everybody wants to find the 69 Camaro or the 70 Chevelles and all that stuff. But unfortunately I cobra think the Cobra in the can or Cobra in a garage or barn or whatever. I think a lot of those have come and gone. Actually on the way here, there was a guy with a 70 Charger sitting in his front yard, so we popped in there, and uh, uh, he'll, he knew what he had, I guess. 30 grand, it was rough. But uh, anyways, those cars, unfortunately, have come and gone. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I'm at the point now where if I see something like, even like a K car, or like an old Daytona, like, like the 80s front wheel drive ones, or a Tempo, for crying out loud, you're like, oh, that's kind of neat when they're in really, really good shape. And that is this. Now, a full-size, full-frame, rear-wheel drive V8, I think this is what you should be looking for. Now they had two doors and all that. I realized it's a four door. It's got the whatever those wire wheel caps are and stuff on them. It's, it's not a hot rod, but 
I mean, for a 35,000 original mile, original paint car, V8, 2,500 bucks, even square bodies are a fortune now. So you can't really go wrong. Let's, uh, we'll check the transmission oil. I guess I should use the keys. Or maybe we can check the engine oil first. He said it was all good. It's got a full tank of fuel in it. I mean, that alone basically subsidized the price by 10%. It's uh, 89, so I guess it's Vortex. So it's like a roller, a roller motor. So this thing should go a bazillion miles. Oh yeah, she's right, right full. Coolant's good. The AC is unplugged. I know it. He said he unplugged it had a, a, a power draw. It still worked, which I believe him. And then unfortunately the connector got a little barbecued on the exhaust. So I guess I'm not getting air conditioning on the way home. Well, I shouldn't say that. It might break down on the way home and we're towing it, in which case I will have air conditioning, but. This thing is like nice. The exhaust, the muffler had fallen off the back, so it's wire tied up. We gotta fix that. Otherwise, wow. This thing's gonna ride like a cloud on the way home. Honestly, you should drive this and I'll drive the truck. You'd probably have a nicer ride home. Yeah, she's right full. We brought tools, we brought fluids, we brought all sorts of stuff. But I don't plan on doing a whole lot of uh, screwing around, I gotta say. If it's uh, if it screws up on the highway, we gotta get home. We're already, like I said, eight hours into this day. Oh, it came with a new set of shocks too. Look at this thing. I feel like we should reenact like another 48 hours or something like that, you know? Like this is the, this is the cop car that Eddie Murphy would have driven. Uh, yeah. Well, we'll get on the highway and see what happens. We'll stop for fuel or who knows what. There's some waterfalls we're gonna stop and check out, I think, while we're at it. Let's get rolling. All right. Let's see how this goes. Unfortunately, there's not much metal in this thing. Definitely is not happy, but we'll figure it out. Wants to die. It must be idle errors. Not happy, so you gotta kinda two foot drive it. We got Danny in tow. Hopefully this thing'll What McGilvery Avenue? Where are we going? We are lost. Small town. Oh I think we know where oh Road closed. Local traffic only. And Danny has the trailer. How are we getting out of this situation? <laughs> oh, and she definitely, she definitely likes to die there. Maybe a, maybe a highway cruise will help us out. Oh yeah, we got her figured out now. Danny's driving with, oh, she's right in the grass. She's, she's struggling a little with the, uh, with the trailer. You know, well, let's just pull this thing out of overdrive. And it'll rev a little faster and be happy. Charging, temperature, full tank of fuel. And everything's working. Man, everything is going good. This thing rides nice. What do you guys think we should do with this hot rod? All right, well. We're gonna monkey around this little town for a bit, maybe check out the waterfall. We'll get on the highway, see how it goes. Hopefully Danny's doing good. I don't think she's ever driven with a trailer or even, oh, with a dolly. It's a dolly.
Well, we made it to the greasy fuel station in Grand Rapids that had murder bathrooms. Yeah. Car's running good. It, uh, we got 18 miles to the gallon to fill it up. I don't know, it was kind of, it, it said full when I got it, but who knows, I didn't put any gas into it. So it's probably better mileage than the stupid truck got. Uh, Danny murdered a bird on the way. <laughs> it was really sad. But uh, she's going good. The only thing is this thing, the second you're not driving, like you try and pull in or off the highway, it just stone dies. So I've been Googling stuff as I've been uh, stopped at a safe, uh, you know, not driving. People are saying, I mean, it could be an ECU when these things screw up or there's all sorts of miscellaneous things. So we'll get home and we'll figure it out. But if you guys know, put that in the comments. But we're just on the long side of halfway home. We've got four and a half hours left. Four and a half hours? So we left at five o'clock in the morning. We should be back at 8, 8.30. But this thing's dialing, so it's doing pretty good. I'm loving it. It rides so nice. Like, you're gonna love this thing. Anyways, we'll get uh, back on the highway. Unfortunately, on the other side of this uh, fancy little town, there was a bunch of construction we got stuck at. So hopefully that's... Oh, you'll probably just have to turn it off. Well, I think it'll turn itself off. Oh, yeah. We'll figure it out. It should be fine. Back on the road. I need a couple of drinks, though. It's 7.30 p.m. We left at 5 or 5.30 a.m. And I think we're about an hour and a half or so from home yet. So hopefully we'll be home at 8.30, 9 o'clock. Car's doing fantastic. Other than it doesn't like to idle. But doesn't skip a beat. It's got some power. Just sips fuel. Cruising real nice. Oh, we got traffic. Um, really? I can't complain. Like, this thing is just fantastic. I don't know what we're going to do with it. Danny's going to probably end up driving it. She, she keeps texting me and uh, messaging me. She's behind me going, oh, that thing looks so good. It does. I got to, what can I say? I know how to pick a car. Uh, so today we're going to get her home and we'll put it just on the street, I guess, for the night. Tomorrow I'm going to wake up first thing in the morning. I'm going to pressure wash underneath. I'm going to go to work real quick, put it on the lift before we open. Just hose it right off, get all the junk off. Then you bring it home, put it on the lift at home, and uh, I'll show you how clean this thing is underneath because it looks fantastic. It's a little low and it was kind of hard to get to all the little bits, but the rear frame rails were perfect, the floors were perfect, all those sort of things. We'll start making a checklist of what we got to do with this thing. Uh, you know, obviously fix up its little running issues, uh, a few little odds that the radio doesn't work. Uh, like I said, the air conditioning doesn't work. And, you know, pack the wheel bearing suit eats for front end, if anything, go through the brakes, kind of carry on. But this thing is so smooth and so nice to drive. I originally wanted to LS swap it and all that, but I gotta say, <laughs> I kinda think just keeping it old man fresh for as long as we can might be the plan. So I'll see you tonight or tomorrow, but, uh, well, I, mean, I shouldn't jinx it. Still got some miles to go. See you in a bit. Just like that, we're home. I'll see you in the garage tomorrow after I pressure washed it. It is a new day. This thing is definitely a large one. Um, <laughs> a little bigger than a Tri-5 Chevy. This morning I pressure washed the hell of underneath. It is perfect. Well, let's get up in the air. I'll show you guys. So now, I did just wash this thing in the pit at work, so I didn't get any of the side, but you can see the, the rockers, solid the whole way back, like no rust in there. Eh, not bad. It's all gungy in there. We'll pull the wheels uh, right away here, but this thing is great. And I mean, 450 miles home, not too bad. We got a couple of couple of door dings in it, a couple of scratches, but again, no issues. Everything is good. You know, classic old man back in there, trunk. The one side was kind of smacked. 
but really a pretty nice little car. Now, this thing lived its life up north, so it's a lot of gravel road, good and bad. The thing with gravel roads, stuff gets packed together, um, rock chips, stuff like that, but it eliminates the salt, all those sort of things. Now, a lot of guys, whether sure or not, used to tell me they would drive down a bunch of dusty roads before winter time, get everything all kind of coated up, and then that would somehow prevent rust. I don't know. Anyways, this thing is so clean underneath. It's like the nicest car I've ever owned. Um, the front end, again, I, I pressure washed it all, but it's in pretty nice, like that's like still originally kind of paint. Now, who knows if the front end's gonna need a little bit of love or not. I tried pressure wash it on there, but you can tell it's, it'll need to be done again. This was absolutely caked with mud and sand. But honestly, it doesn't even look too horrible. We'll pull the wheels, take a look at the brakes. Um, the bushings and stuff look to be in eh, fine to me for what it is. You know what? I bet that the 1980s GM bushings <laughs> are probably going to last 30 some years and the brand new Moog stuff will last three years. So if there's anything I can leave on this, I am going to because I'm a big believer in that's good stuff. Um, you see, the other side of the frame gives an idea of what the whole thing looked like, so I didn't get right in there. Probably should have done a better job, but oh well. We got all that taken care of. Um, look at the floor pans, though. Just like they're still painted, just a little bit of light surface rust. Absolutely perfect. This thing was obviously jacked up a little funny, so the frame has got this little section here that kind of it's not boxed here, so we'll just bend that down. That's no big deal. The back control arms, the rear end, everything is just, again, muddy, but no rust. Underneath here, like the rear frame rails are all just perfection. Like, like come on, it's still painted. Trunk drop downs, like that's a factory undercoating, no issues. Look at that, that's where it's gonna rust. If it's gonna rust, and it's like fine. When have you ever had, well, I guess if you're from Canada or in the Rust Belt area, a wheel lip is still there with the chrome. I bet we could unscrew the chrome and take it off, not break every single bolt and hate life. So, I mean, there you have it. It's just absolutely phenomenal. I oh, think yeah, you can tell where I kind of missed a little bit in there. But yeah, like the bushings all look in good shape and everything. Again, a little bit rusty on that. That was all, everything was covered. Well, it still is in just gravel dust and whatnot, but look at the floor pans. <laughs> Come on. That's phenomenal. So the things right off the bat is that little section of uh, frame we got to kind of deal with. We'll bend that down, no big deal. The exhaust has seen better days, but Rock Auto sells so like every piece for like $30. So the up and over diff piece, it's got a bunch of little tiny kind of pinholes starting to form in it, which I bet that's probably just from rocks hitting it. So, and the muffler, it's had a patch weld on, so it needs a new muffler. The front looks okay, so we'll do muffler, uh, tail pipey area. It has a resonator, but they sell a non-California, which is just like a straight with no resonator in it. So we'll just put that in there. I couldn't get up into this. That looks fine. No issues there. GM mud flaps. So we gotta get that taken care of, the exhaust. Um, obviously that running issue, we'll have to address that. But I think what we'll do next is maybe pull the wheels and just see kinda what the brakes are gonna look like. Um, I'm anticipating this is just going to need a once over mechanically. Go through the brakes, make sure they're still good. Make sure the front end's good, some ball joints, stuff. Now if I have to change just one, I will. I'm not changing. I'm changing as little as I possibly can. And uh, enjoying the car. Uh, I've been doing all sorts of reading on the why it stalls issue. And there's, I guess this is like a 305 TBI deal. Kind of the entry level to fuel injection. Which obviously there were a few problems along the ways and just time kind of goes on. This thing, he did give me a bill. It had a $500 service for, or $600 something like that, 
plugs, wires, uh, cap, rotor, kind of like the basic stuff, like you'd tune up uh, like an 81 that's <laughs> not fuel injected. And he got it back and it was still um, not good. So that was part of the reason it was being sold now. It's just because in a small town, no one could kind of diagnose it and he got tired of throwing good money at a bad problem. So we'll pull these caps off. Oh, if you have dog dish hubcaps, let me know. Cause I'd like to make this thing look like a cop car. So I was gonna pull the wheel off and I couldn't figure out how to get the hubcap off and I thought I was losing my mind. So I Googled it. So every other hubcap I've ever done, you just pump, pump, pop it off, right? This one, look at this friggin' stuff. You pop the center cap out. Then it has an Allen key. This is like a PSA for any of you uh, young folk. This is, hang on, I'm on the wrong side. We need to uh, take off a hubcap, which actually, luckily we didn't have a, a spare or a flat tire on the side of the road. Apparently, the, the, maybe there's a key for this in the glove box, but I would have been struggling with this. So this comes off. So on the movies, when you see all the cop cars with their friggin' hubcaps blowing off, it was all fake. What? So we'll go ahead and put this back together real quick so we don't lose. I guarantee these are probably worth some money to somebody if you were looking for one. So we'll put those over here. Man, this garage is clean. Now let's go put it back on. But uh, yeah, that was that was something. Spoke broke that hubcap and half trying to take it off. But uh, let's see what's behind these wheels. I'm anticipating original stuff. Genuine AC Delco. Look at that little hub for your lugs. I'll just scratch the paint there. We all saw that coming, right? Ooh, those are mangled. Need to set a disc or to be turned at the very least. No bueno. Does that show up on camera? They're like 3D. That's not the plan. Uh, brake hose cracked. Bushings all look good. At least they're all there. It came with a set of shocks. We'll have to mess and see if it needs any steering components, but. Even the sway bar and all that looks good. So we're going for a set of brakes and a brake hose. Hopefully we can just get that brake line off. Let's see what the back looks like. Rock Auto's getting some of our money. Man, what's up with the Rock Auto shipping costs lately? The price of the parts are okay, but man, the shipping companies, they're hammering us. Need Amazon to get on it. Even Amazon, though, I guess lately, the next day has not been next day. Man, I feel like these haven't been off in a while. We're gonna need a hammer. I got one. Man, organization. Who'd have thought, eh? Easily done. Well, I got a bit of ridge to him. Not bad. What we got going on here? Well, this is all small stuff. Yeah, shoes are mediocre. Nothing's leaking. Yeah. Nothing looks like it's gonna be all seized up. We'll brake clean that, see if the e-brake still works. Change them shocks while we're at it, but really, not too bad, I can't really complain. So, front brakes, rear brakes, we'll get the front end once over, clean it all up. It's all original. 
And then, oh, we'll see if we can make it run a little better. I got, I think, 500 bucks. This thing will be like mechanically mint for Danny's drive to work again. Eee. Okay, we'll see when it's down on the ground. I've picked up these lug nuts. Oh, there's one. So the old girl's got a little, little dent in there, but you can actually get to the whole thing from the inside. If I can just kind of give it a whack. I need a piece of wood. Yeah, I can get in there. This might be too big. I like to push it kind of evenly. Oh, maybe. Need something to pry on. There's just a plastic canister there. Oh, there we go. Oh, my PDR skills aren't bad. It's a little more at the top, maybe. But. like 60 percent better okay so i've done some preliminary diagnosis i think i may have kind of figured it out so this is your electronic carburetor you have your two injectors which fire fuel in very simple it's just like a regular carburetor tbi um i played around with all the little vacuum ports i had blocked them all off the one that's blocked off is the one that goes to the cold air flupper deal on the uh, intake or where I put a lid I'm losing it the lid anyway um, so we have our throttle position sensor and our IAC so that'll rich or a lot more air in and out I believe that's working because it does kick on to high idle when it's cold and that kind of circumvents any other issues we're having now I'll show you what happens here it'll run and then it'll kind of die and sputter out unless you're kind of on the throttle so, so you see it runs and then it dies now what we're going to do is uh, work quick here but i believe i'll just explain it because it's going to be loud with the car running i think the gasket between the throttle body and the intake is just plumb wore out or something like that or there's some vacuum leak in the back here and i'll show you what it is with brake clean so obviously we'll do it again just to show you Ugh. It runs and then dies. Now, what we're gonna do now is just spray a little brake clean back there. Fire it up. Now, if we continue to do that on the back, now we're not spraying it in. You can see the fuel dripping out there. We're just going on the back and we can adjust the RPM. We stop, it'll suck it all in, it's starting to go, oh, that gasket's just got to be plumb more out of it, there we go, unhappy, 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 oh, trying to figure itself out, unhappy, die, so, let's turn this key off, I'm thinking we, well, we obviously have some sort of vacuum leak at the back here, but, that we have maybe it's this one hose these are all hard line i think there's three bolts that take the throttle body if we can just kind of pop it up and we'll see if that uh, this little gasket's wore out maybe that'd be a nice simple fix well i got this thing all apart man i'm just watching Wayland's video about his fire man the fires people for the love of christ be careful i feel about him brent man fuck <sighs> sorry guys anyway um we got this throttle body off. Now, I gotta say, the gasket didn't actually look bad. Um, the thing is, it, it fits like this, and there's three bolts that hold it down, and like this bolt for sure was could have been a little tighter in my mind. Uh, this one was tight, this one was kinda not. But it doesn't look like anything was sneaking through, really, that I see. But it is kind of depressed. Obviously, I don't have one of these, but I'm thinking a little silicone on there. I'll try it again. I don't know what else goes on the back here. We have a, a, a 
keyed on, this is out, this is in for fuel, so in and then return. And it has this vacuum line, which goes to this doohickey. No idea what that is. So unless there's a vacuum leak there, this doesn't move easy. So maybe it's kind of broken in there. Nothing looks bad. So I don't know. Unless like I was spraying back here, I was spraying at the base. Like I don't think I was getting anything in to uh, circumvent any sort of fuel and stuff. What I can do, we'll I'll put it all back together. I could then put the air filter and all that back on and then test again, just in case some was, it was sucking it in, which it could have been. I mean, anything's possible, but uh, I don't know. That's a, that's a weird one. I mean, it's got some kind of overspray or something like that on the side there. I don't know. So basically I didn't really find a smoking gun other than I think the problem is back there. I just, there's no other vacuum line. So I'll put it back together. Worst case, we can crimp this off and see this. I don't think that's cracked or anything. Endless vacuum lines. So I'm going to reinstall everything, make sure everything's tight, just put a little schmoo of silicone on the intake, which I'm sure you're not supposed to, but uh, that's what we're doing. You know, it's always good. So when you're the guy working this thing last, all the plug wires were, were numbered and stuff, that's generally a pretty good uh, indication the guy's not 100% confident as to what he is doing in my mind, but uh, yeah, whatever. Way she goes, I guess. It's an old car at this point. Who, who the hell, like where would you take this car? That's the problem. So I know I got a bit of a deal and all that, but you have an 89 Caprice that doesn't run well. Who are you taking it to? You're not taking it to Midas or Meineke or any of those places. They're not, they're not gonna know you. Take it to the dealer. You'd have to find like the oldest guy who's still at the dealer. And this would have been like the first car he ever worked on and he's ready to retire tomorrow. And hopefully he still has a good memory. Like, unfortunately these old cars, as cool as they are, you gotta work on them yourself. Throttle body off again. Uh, obviously it didn't work. Uh, we were playing around and it did the exact same thing. Sprayed a little brake clean in the back and it continues to run. So I am kind of perplexed unless maybe these plugs is no good. Huh. That would have been something to think. Anyways, I'll, maybe I'll check those, take those out and just, you know, pipe tape and put them back together. I play with this. This obviously must be the vacuum, you know, sensor because when you take it off or whatever, it really doesn't like it. Anyway. I was calling around to see if there was a throttle body rebuild kit, which there is. No one in Canada has one, so it'll be in a Amazon or Rock Auto thing. So I thought, ah, I'll take it apart, see what happens. Honestly, everything looked really, really good. I took the injectors out. They were clean, like nothing looked bad. This was loose, so we'll see. And I mean, the only thing on the back is that one vacuum line, which clearly runs right there, which is clear. So, yeah, I wonder what is going on there. Doesn't really make any sense to me, but we'll figure it out. So the next thought is, obviously the, the idle air is working because it's going in and out or it's adjusting up and down. So maybe it's not adjusting properly or maybe the TPS doesn't know where it is. And it's clockable, so maybe that was changed at some point and it was not done properly or maybe it came out of adjustment or maybe the mechanic when he was trying to fix it was playing with that. I don't know. Uh, there is a mechanical throttle stop, but I don't want to touch any of that. So very simple. And I mean, I didn't like, I was expecting to see some blown out gaskets or something, but everything looks, this little diaphragm was good. There's a little spring behind it. It was fine. Everything is just, like, I haven't cleaned this. This is how it came apart. So it's pretty much mint. So we'll try putting it back together and maybe playing with the TPS. And I see if that's not it, then I don't know. I guess I'll have to do some significant Googling or wait for the comment section because you guys always know best. Well, <laughs> put it all back together. Same friggin' issue. So I'm not really too sure. I played with a bunch of sensors. That does make differences. So I believe they're all working. Again, a lot of the stuff you got to use kind of a multimeter and test it. So that will be the next step. This is just kind of fun to see if there's something blatantly obvious uh, with the car, uh, which obviously needs a little bit more diagnoses, which we'll get. I mean, it's not the end of the world. Um, my, again, my real issue is do we just LS swap this thing or do we just kind of leave it bone stock? And I'm kind of thinking <laughs> bone stock is the way to go. But uh, we got to get on the old internet or a bunch of bits and bobs for this thing. I mean, we might as well just let it rip, put a bunch of new pieces on this, all the brakes and stuff like that, new lines. Uh, AC Delco brand is what we're gonna go with. We're gonna spend a little bit extra money, keep this thing as genuine 
as absolute possible and then hopefully we can get this TBI all dialed together or you know, put a carburetor on it and a uh, you know, little regulator. It's just so nice inside. I don't know how much I showed it there, but it's so clean. I mean, just everything, everything works. Seat works, I've already made it dirty, of course. Tilt, oh, look, look at that. My God. Jeez, I should have been playing with that. It was kind of running out of room there a little bit in the car. The back seat's just, ugh. everything's good. Just everything is covered in old man dust. No, no, it's cruising dust. This is, this is such a satisfying noise. Huh? So there we have it. Now again, I kind of think that the last minute barn finds and all that, I mean, they're out there, don't get me wrong. I also feel as though people know what stuff is worth. Like I said, when I was driving up to look at this car, there was a 70 Charger 500, I guess. I don't know much about those Dodges. Sitting there, and it was rough, blown transmission, rusty in all the usual spots underneath and everything. Talked to the guy, you know, he'd had it since brand new, same as this, and uh, you know, yada, yada, yada. 30 grand or I can sit here and rot was the answer I got. It's like, whew. So, I mean, they're out there, but uh, 30 grand on a, on a ratty old charger. I mean, I guess maybe someone's paying for it. That guy is not me. These, I think, are the new deals. I mean, you guys know square body trucks are out of, uh, out of the price range. Now it's the OBS style, same with the Fords, all that stuff. 80s is coming around, the two-door things. I mean, I guess maybe a 16-year-old kid wouldn't exactly love having this as his first car. That being said, when we were cruising home and we got to the residential areas, I got two thumbs up, one from a kid, one from a dude. So, I don't know. Is this cool now? I feel like I'm out of the loop. Maybe it needs a hood scoop and stuff, but that's where I'm leaving it. The cars are still out there. We'll work on this thing because uh, at the very least we got to get it on the road. It's so close. Not having to do a bunch of welding and grinding and oh, I am excited to work on this thing because it's just mechanical. No, I'm sure I'll screw something up and we'll go from there, but uh, go inside, spend a bunch of money on Rock Auto and let this thing sit for a few days till the boxes show up later in the week. That's the plan. 450 miles home, made it, no real issues. What do you guys think we should do with it? Drive it, should it be in the state, should we LS swap it? Oh, and one thing that's real important with it. So this is the, like, it's a DD Speed Shop car and I wanna leave it bone stock-ish, but I'd like to paint something on it. My buddy Joe would come over, but I don't know what. What should we do? What should we name it? And where should we put it? I kind of want to just call it like the loner or something like that, because let's be honest, all the hot rods will be kind of, you know, when you're working on them, you get the loner. Danny didn't like it. Let me know down below after you subscribe and uh, like the video. I'll see you on the next one. And if you know about this TBI stuff, shoot me an email, because I don't know anything about it. Burr here, DD Speed Shop. So we were all done. I was done. The video was done. Murr showed up about three minutes later. I showed my little brake clean trick. He took it all apart. So now he made me run down to the Napa, spend $28 on a couple of gaskets. He only thought we needed one, but I thought we'd double it up. Because clearly it's a vacuum leak. So now when it doesn't work, it's my fault. It's on the old man. It was a big deal. We got, he got recognized at Napa. It was like a whole you know, kissing babies and signing tatas. He's a big deal, you know? <laughs> so we're going to slap this thing back together with dose gaskets. Of course, he's doing a bunch of cleanup there that I would never do. And we'll carry on. And then uh, when it's running mint, we'll cruise for chicks later, eh, Mer, at the. You, you bet. Well, it's, it's probably almost 3 o'clock. The ladies that are going to like this are almost ready for bed. So we gotta <laughs> we got to get her rolling. Map sensor. So Mer, it's not working. It's not working. Now, of course, now we got the doctor here. So we, we tested voltage on TPS. We have the correct amount um, at idle and it does move around. The uh, IAC does move in and out. The EGR, we do play with that. It is free moving. So these are all more things. Um, I mean, the map sensor, when you disconnect it, it goes real unhappy. So it appears all the sensors are kind of working. A few people have said on the internet, which I didn't really believe, that the ECU can screw up, which is weird. However, Rock Auto sells the ECU, which makes you think they sell a few of them. I don't know what else it could possibly... I just don't... Does it make sense how the brake clean makes it run? That's vacuum leak in the carburetor world. So uh, I don't know what's happening here, but I think we're going to keep messing around with it and uh, it's probably in the video yet again. So round two, no more encores, unless uh, we somehow miraculously figure it out in the next 10 minutes. 
we will see on the next one. I'm reading your comments.